live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back to bright and sunny San Francisco. Gorgeous day here in the city on the bay. Dave Vellante, John Walls, we continue our coverage here on theCUBE, VMworld 2019, with uh, Dr. Rico from uh, uh, Infidant, uh, CMO. Doc, good to see you again, sir. Infinidat. Oh, Infinidat, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, good I to see you. I missed my opportunity, but thanks, Dave. <laughs> right, yeah, right. thanks, and, good uh, to be back. You bet, Mark Crivier, who is a uh, Principal Systems Engineer at US Signal. Good yeah. to see you again, Mark. You, yeah. you were here just last year, right? And yeah, now, I'm, I'm an together. alumni now. Well, We'll touch yeah. base on that in here just a little bit. Um, Doc, first off, let's just talk about the show from your right. perspective, uh, you know, what you're doing here uh, to explain to our viewers at home, you know, what it's all about and what you find the vibe that's going on this year. What, do you, what kind the of sense do you get? The vibe is fantastic, the sense is great. Uh, you know, there's coming back to San Francisco, I'm not sure what we were really expecting, but it, it's, it's a really good tempo, a lot of great people, a lot of great feedback on our, on our recent launch. A lot of people looking at what are we doing, especially with VMware and availability, and, uh, lots of use cases, new use cases for snapshot technologies, which is fantastic. Uh, the 100% availability, it, it, it's just great, get, great getting people to come up to you and say, hey, this is incredible, uh, you guys actually put some teeth behind your guarantees. With, you know, you're not just promising some future discounts or something. And, I, and in a VM world uh, environment where I've got my VMs that uh, I need that kind of guarantee, I need that support, I need to know that my systems are going to be there when I need them because that's my business. Right, it, it's it's just an incredible vibe. And you had your party last night. We had our party last night. Very and guess cool who venue. was there? <laughs> <laughs> I did stop by. It was a very cool venue, the, the San Francisco Mint, which is it was kind of awesome. Nice. Yeah, it was a great great environment. We had, it was great having people like Dave there and some of the other industry luminaries to talk to our customers. I didn't get the tour of the vault, that, but. You know. I'll get you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark, I mentioned in, in the intro, we had you on last year. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's look back at the last 12 months for you, US Signal, and yeah. uh, what's been going on with you, and then what are you seeing here and kind of feeling here in terms of uh, the business? Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. Um, it's been another great year at US Signal. Uh, we are planning on opening a new data center in the Detroit metro area, uh, coming up uh, online Q1 of 2020, so that's exciting for us. Purpose built, wholly owned, and operated by us, uh, so that's, that's great, it's going to add to our, our capabilities in that region. Um, we've had a heavy focus on DR uh, technologies, DR as a service technologies in the past year. Um, seeing a lot of success, a lot of really good conversations with customers uh, in developing their plans and, and bringing on new capabilities uh, to be able to service those needs. Mm -hmm. So, tell us more about the DR as a service. I mean, that was obviously one of the early sort of cloud use cases. Yeah. Um, Add some color. Uh, what is it all about? Uh, how does it relate to some of the other DR solutions that are out there? And Absolutely. what role do these guys play? Yeah, well we, we conducted a survey of a little over 100 of uh, companies in our region, had a, hundred, a little over 100 respondents, and three out of four respondents uh, told us that their biggest concerns were either distributed di denial of service mm -hmm. or ransomware. You know, so you got these bad actors out there. Um, and you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad actor. It could be something, uh, you know, force of nature, you know, mm -hmm. taking, making data unavailable, right? Uh, it doesn't matter how great the equipment is if uh, either a bad actor or, or, or a, a nature takes it out for you. So having that protection, we, uh, we're able to have um, replication technologies. We actually have three separate uh, technologies that we use now. Uh, we enhanced our um, Zerto-based offering to include multi-cloud, so we can now have customers replicate to either multiple cloud destinations, uh, us being one of them, or they can replicate to one of their sites and us as a tertiary site. So that's new, uh, they're able to bring their existing licensing. Uh, one thing that's exciting to me, near and dear to my heart, is um, Draz for VMware based on the vCloud availability platform. Mm -hmm. So we're a big VM, uh, a vCloud shop, you know, big big consumer of uh, VMware technologies, that's why we're out here. <laughs> um, 
And that's, that's really exciting to me because it uses uh, built-in VMware replication technologies. There's not a lot of learning curve, there's not a lot of extra components. Super simple mm. uh, to get up and running and get RPOs as low as five minutes and it's easy and it's uh, relatively uh, cheap and on an OpEx uh, mm -hmm. type, type of platform where you're paying for storage and per VM and that's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we've uh, also uh, spun up a replication for Veeam, cloud replication for Veeam based on uh, uh, that ecosystem. So we've got a lot of entry points, a lot of different ways that we can protect that data and bring it into, you know, get a, get a copy in our data center so that in the event it becomes unavailable at the source, it's you know, either managed or customer managed, we can get it up and running in a short time frame on our infrastructure. And Infinidad is the primary storage underneath all this? Or yeah. Or is, yep. So ex yep. explain more about, so Doc, you and, you and I have had these conversations, yeah. you know, the, the state of the art, whatever, 15 years ago was this three site data centers, very That's complex, right. extremely expensive. I'm, I'm interested in how we're attacking that, that problem today. Um, you, you obviously with multi-cloud, it's multi-site, multi, multi -site, but how, how are we attacking the, the cost problem, the complexity problem, the I can't test because I can fail over <laughs> but I'm afraid to fail back problem? Yeah. Well, you know, there's so many different ways to, to cover all of these. We're talking just about ransomware. You know, ransomware, our immutable snaps become an important play. And we have, we have Snap Rotator, which will allow you to build a certain number of snaps and have them just rotate through so you're not creating an infinite number, you're not wasting time and space. And by the way, time and space, you know, our snapshots are zero overhead. Right? There's, zero, there's zero performance penalty unless you want to crash consistent copy. And there's really zero data overhead because it's only the incremental data that you write. So by creating this, you can do every, every couple seconds and then create some immutable copies of that. You know, make, them, make them time out so they can't be modified. Um, you know, 30 days, 60 days, whatever, whatever you decide administratively. So that's great. If you're looking for the for the DRAS, the the DR as a service type capabilities, you know, whether it's whether it's single site or multi site, going to cloud service providers makes a lot of sense because now if, even if it's on premises to a cloud service provider, now you're not having to worry about that second set of infrastructure. You're not having to worry about the management of it. You're not having to worry about the systems integration of it, or even go CSP to CSP. Right, go go from you know one data center within your your, your favorite cloud service provider, hopefully U.S. Signal, to another, uh, you know, or any one of our other great partners would be would be super too, and then of course Infinisync, you know, where if you really want to you want that longer distance capability, why bother with a bunker site? Why bother with all that complexity and all that cost and overhead? Put an Infinisync appliance in with a, with a VM. And, and you've got the recoverability. You can go asynchronous distances and have a zero RPO. For way, way less Oh, a fraction of the cost. So it'll cost, cost you less for the Infinisync appliance <laughs> than it'll cost you for the telecoms equipment right. that I you mean, need for a bunker site. Let building another data center and... Yeah. Oh. yeah. Me, go ahead. Well, I, what I'm curious about, I mean, I heard a number yesterday in one of the interviews we had about, about ransomware. Right. Um, and the number kind of blew me away, and and I thought, and I've thought about it. one out of every three companies will be a victim of or at least a, a, a ransomware attack within the next two years, which mm. means everyone uh, over the next six, you know, if you extrapolate that out, yeah. th does that sound about right from what you're seeing that the intrusions are reaching that kind of frequency and you know with I'm that surprised it's that low, but I'll let my even <laughs> um, we we've done some events where we actually demo uh, how easy it is like through a phishing attack to, to get that in there. So you know it's not just about having those protections in place, it's you know, user training. That's you know a huge area that uh, you know training those users what to look for in those emails to avoid that sort of thing. But it's it's not perfect. You know people are in perfect and right. uh, yeah, you got to have both the protection on the front end, the training for the people, and those recovery options in the event it does get in. Um, in our uh, survey, the average monetary damage was over $150,000 hmm. per, per incident. And that means that some people got off a little lighter and some people paid a lot more if that was the, if that was the average. average right? yeah. But did you pay the ransom? Uh, not if you've got a good plan in place that you've tested. <laughs> 
But, but, but it is, I mean. Yeah. That was a reasonable question, it's right? Should huge I quandary, some, right? I mean, yeah. some, are, some are. Some are. Some right? are. Right? 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 Atlanta, right? Atlanta says, no, we're going yeah. to pay a boatload yeah. to protect against it, but we're not going to pay that, what was it, 55000 whenever it was. Yeah, I forget what <laughs> Let's yeah. negotiate. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, I think I said but, last time I was here that, you know, until you've tested your plan, you don't really have one. You know, it rings just yeah, as well, true what's your business worth? I mean, it's a great question, really, right? I mean, what is your business worth to you? Your business is probably worth a lot more and they probably throw these numbers out there thinking well then it becomes a no-brainer for you to pay and that's the whole point right because yeah. what is ransomware it's malware that's that that's recoverable maybe right you're not even sure of that and is it usually is it operator error is it a human error that that allows that to work more often than not or is it a, a mixture of of technical chops or just it, it's a mixture. Uh, you, you've got to know uh, what vulnerabilities are out there on your on your infrastructure. You got to make sure you're you know staying up to date on uh, patching those vulnerabilities, uh, paying attention to any compliance practices. You know if you're a, a compliant organization, you know HIPAA, PCI. Our our entire infrastructure footprint is actually HIPAA and PCI uh, compliant at the the levels that we control. So it's a it, it's a heavy lift, and you got you got to stick with it. But, but just to put, kind of bring bring it full circle to the comment about the ransom and paying it, you know, Mark says something really important: have a good plan. I would argue have a good partner. If you don't have a, a, a CISO, a CISO who's got the chops to be dealing with these types of problems, that's when you need a partner like US Signal to to really step in and take you through what's involved in a realistic plan, something that's not going to break uh, break the bank. Something, but something that's really going to protect your business going forward, because these things are very real. One of the concerns I have in this topic is that things happen really fast these days. And so if there are, if there are problems, they replicate very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, how do you address that, that problem? Is it architecture, analytics, I'm sure process, but maybe you could add some color to that. Uh, all, of the, all of the above. Um, Having those controls in place, those segregations. I mean, we we've got obviously uh, you know clear segregation between our management and customer data planes, and each of our customer data planes are separate from each other. You know, it's secure multi-tenancy, not just multi-tenancy. Um, so yeah, it's important to keep those delineations. Um, you know, user access, making sure that people only have access to what they need, um, and a lot of that again is covered by those compliance practices and paying close attention to to what they have in there. I mean, there are reasons they have these guidelines and these rules and these audits. It's to help, uh, in large part, to protect against that. Um, you mentioned before, Mark, your uh, heavy VMware user, Infinidat, it's kind of the new kid in the block. Um, people said, oh, they'll Not never be. What's, what's that? <laughs> Not Say, for us. Not for you, right, yeah. but you know, for the storage industry. Yeah. Doc and I have been in the storage industry a while. So, but, um, and, but I'm curious as to what you want from a supplier like Infinidat, why you chose Infinidat, um, the, the, how they doing with regard to VMware, Affinity, yeah. you know, all those things that people tend to talk about as important. All right, well, um, I think it's important. Uh, well, in, in the Infinidat experience, like the, the company experience, the support experience, uh, it is the uh, benchmark by which we judge all other vendors now. Um, it's that good. Um, and the working with us whenever we need equipment, you know, obviously they, they've got, uh, the price per terabyte uh, is hard to beat uh, with the way they're able to leverage that technology. Um, the responsiveness, if, we, if we've needed uh, something in a hurry, they've been able to get it to us in a hurry. Um, and it ties in extremely well with our infrastructure because we scale so quickly, right? We, uh, Trends are very hard with us because there's all these hockey sticks, right? It's going, 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 we get a big order and it goes up real, really fast. Um, I think the, the theme right now is scale to win. Yep. Um, so that, that resonates with us because uh, by having that in place and having that scale ready to go, uh, we're able to, we don't even need to anticipate those hockey sticks because it's already there. Great. Well, gentlemen, thanks for the time. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Doc, can fit it at. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, it's great to hey, see you both again. See, look forward Thanks to seeing 2020, right? I'll be back. Yeah, it's become an annual thing. Good Michael deal. said uh, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be celebrating the, our 20th year, so I'm 
All right. Looking forward to seeing and you And this is our 10th year here. So uh, anniversaries all across the board. <laughs> right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Have a good uh, rest of the show. We appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gentlemen. Back Thank with you more. VMworld 2019. We continue our coverage live here on theCUBE. We're at Moscone Center North in San Francisco.